the unique name, the distinctive name, the name that belongs to the true God alone mm. and cannot be given to creatures. It's mm. one thing to call a creature Elohim or the like, but to call any creature by the Tetragrammaton is nah, utter son. blasphemy. Nah, son. The Talmud says that in numerous places, but has a falling out with it here because it doesn't know how to get around this problem. God is triune, and if it is necessary to believe in the Trinity in order mm -hmm. to be saved, how then do we account for the fact that the Old Testament does Hi, not Mr. reveal Rodney. the doctrine of the Trinity? Let us know. Hey, hey, hey. I hey, hey. absolutely okay, deny that the Jews did not know that God is triune. The doctrine of the Trinity is a fundamental article of the true religion. Amen. It is a salvific doctrine. One must believe in God triune for salvation. Now, that doesn't mean everybody has full understanding of him. They'll grow in their understanding, but they have to have a rudimentary knowledge of God as Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. That's the whole part of the initiatory right of baptism into the triune name. And what is a fundamental truth doesn't admit of addition or diminution, oh. right? You, you, you can't say something's fundamental today that wasn't fundamental before. The way of salvation is the same in all ages. Abraham was saved through the same gospel, believing the same gospel that we're saved through believing. That's the point Paul makes in Romans 4. That's the point he makes in Galatians 3. That's the mm. point that's made in, in Hebrews 4. Mm. They had the gospel preached to them, but they weren't saved because they didn't mix what they heard with faith. So it's the same message all the way through. The Trinity is all over the Old Testament. All Exodus 24, what does it say? 24.1, God speaking to Moses says, come up the mountain to Jehovah. Come mm. up the mountain to the Lord. Why does the Lord... So hold on. Let's just go ahead and just look at it a little bit. Let's just look at it, read it real quick, because it kind of went a little fast. Then he said to Moses, come up to the Lord. You and Aaron, Nadab, and Abu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship at a distance. Moses alone, however, shall come near to the Lord, but they shall not come near, nor shall the people come up with him. Exodus 24. All right. Shout out to Anthony Rogers providing the scriptures. Has come up the mountain to Jehovah. Come up the mountain to the Lord. Why does the Lord speak that way? As though the Lord to whom Moses is invited to come is another. He says <clears throat> it again in the passage more than once. He speaks about the Lord to whom Moses is to come as another. And later in the text, it speaks of Moses actually seeing the God of Israel. <clears throat> so not only does the Lord appear as someone distinct from the Lord, but he appears before him in a visible, palpable <clears throat> manner, in a <clears throat> human form. Now, who is this? Well, even if you read the Talmudic material where they're trying to suppress what earlier Jews believed, they say that this figure is the one spoken of in the prior chapter as the Malach Yahweh, mm. right? the Malach Yehovah, which means the messenger of the Lord. So it's not just an angel, y'all. It's not just the angel on which y'all think. Messenger, that the messenger is actually Yahweh coming down. Ain't that a beautiful thing? Too many times, too many times do people try to say, you know, these Unitarians or whatnot, try to say, oh, it's just a messenger, it's just a Shiliac, it's just this and that. No, no agency, from my understanding and from what I've learned from people that are much smarter than I, Anthony Rogers, Dr. James White, my brother Rabbi Ed, Radar Apologetics, all state that agency does not work that way, that you can't profess to be this person, though you are acting as an agent, that you're still your own person. So certain things that you can't do, certain things that you still cannot claim, like being Yahweh. The word messenger doesn't mean, or malach doesn't mean angel in Hebrew. It can refer to what we ordinarily mean by messengers or by, by um, angels, but it's not what the word itself means. It's a functional term, not an ontological term. Whenever the Old Testament talks about the malach Yahweh, it's talking about a divine theophany. Mm. He's called the God of Israel in Exodus 24 when it says Moses saw the God of Israel. The Talmud admits that this is the same figure that Moses saw. Mm. The problem is they have to have a falling out with themselves when they say that it's not a divine person who's being called. They're saying that he's being called the Lord, even though it's not really the Lord. Elsewhere in the Talmud, it admits that the divine name, the covenant name of God is incommunicable. 
It's referred to as the Shem HaMaforesh and the Shem HaMayahud, which means the unique name, the distinctive name, the name that belongs to the true God alone mm. and cannot be given to creatures. It's mm. one thing to call a creature Elohim or the like, but to call any creature by the Tetragrammaton is nah, utter son. blasphemy. Nah, son. The Talmud says that in numerous places, but has a falling out with it here because it doesn't know how to get around this problem. But what do earlier Jews say about this? What do Second Temple Jews say about this? They say that when the Lord is telling Moses to come up to the Lord, they interpret this second figure called Lord as the Memra or the Logos, the mm. word of the Lord, over and over again. So wait, hold on. Hold on. So they got this earlier? Because, you know, a lot of people like to say the Greek philosopher Philo, right, that John got his understanding of the word from him. Now, granted, he says logos, right? But he's stating that even further back, they were talking about that, the, the Memra, the, the Hebrew equivalent. Yo, so was it John getting it from Philo or was it John getting it from being that he was a Jew, the real Jews from back in the day, not the rabbinic Jews that we know today, but the ones back in the day that knew that God was multi-personal. Is that what's going on here, Mr. Rogers? Is that what you're saying, my brother? Hmm. Seems like it fits that way. Seems like it makes more sense that way than the other way, especially when the other way is not following the trail that uh, God has given us throughout the scriptures and history. But hey, you know, some people still going to believe what they believe. But thank God for people like Anthony Rogers being able to break it down. Being able to break down what was really going on back then and not just some nonsense they read on Reddit. Again, this figure is called the Memra, the word, the, the Dabar in Hebrew. Mm. So uh, the Trinity is all over the Old Testament. It's all over Second Temple Jewish writings. In fact, uh, I mean, think of uh, the Book of Wisdom. When it says, on the, when the night of Passover was far spent, your all-powerful word leapt from heaven's royal throne mm. and bounded like a fierce warrior into the doomed land. And then it says he swung the sharp sword of his inexorable decree. His head reached to heaven while his feet were upon the earth. So here is this figure portrayed as a magnificently large figure in his theophanic appearance, who's got feet that step on the earth and his head reaches to the heavens and he's called the word of God. And where is his proper abode? Where does he come from? Not merely heaven, but heaven's royal throne. In fact, he's called your all-powerful word. When the night of Passover was half spent, your all-powerful word, your logos, leapt from heaven's royal throne Let him know. into the doomed land. This is all over Jewish writings because it's all over the Tanakh. It's all over the Torah. Mm. Hey, let him know, Anthony Rogers. No, 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 no. Because he was talking about God being in the Old Testament. I want to show a verse that shows that obviously God was multi-personal in the Old Testament. And that our understanding of where we're at now in the New Testament. When we know that nobody has ever seen God the Father except Jesus who's made him known. That obviously the Lord that's been appearing. The, uh, the angel of the Lord is Jesus. So now the Lord appeared. So now the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of the Memorah. While he was sitting at the tent door in the heat of the day. When he raised his eyes and looked, behold, three men were standing opposite of him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed to the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please do not pass your servant by. So we see right here that he's addressing him as the Lord. He's not saying angels, not doing anything else like that. And again, when we see other passages, especially like passages in Revelation, when John is trying to greet the angel in the same manner that he is. We know he's actually an angel because he said, don't do that. I'm just like you. But right here, we do not see that. So then we come down a little bit more and it says the three men rose up there and looked down towards Sodom. And Abraham was walking with them to send them off. The Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Since Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation. And in him, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. For I have chosen him so that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice so that the Lord may bring upon Abraham what he has spoken about him. And the Lord said, the outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great 
and their sin is exceedingly grave. I will go down now and see whether they have done entirely as the outcry which has come to me indicates, and I will know. So he's not speaking as in any time that a prophet comes or another messenger comes, they don't speak in the manner that they're actually the one speak. So they're quoting and they're stating that, hey, this is what the Lord is saying. In these passages, there is no quotations of somebody saying that this is the Lord saying, no, this is the Lord saying this. The Lord said, therefore, that is God in physical form with Abraham at the time. And again, when we come to the New Testament, we know that nobody has seen the father except the son who's made him known. So therefore, who is this right here? Who is the Lord speaking? Hmm. Trinitarians know. Everybody else? Ah, just an angel, but it doesn't compute and it doesn't make sense. That being said, I appreciate you watching for this point, man. That was a great video, a great breakdown. Shout out to Anthony Rogers sharing with us how we know and how we can be assured that the Trinity is all throughout the scriptures. That's amazing because we know what the truth is and we don't have to hide anything. We know and agree with the entirety of scripture and don't got to sweep anything under the rug or make anything up when you actually believe in the truth. If you made it up to this point, I appreciate you so very much. See the ticker down below, like, share, comment, all that fun stuff with this video. If you rock with it, you rock with it. Subscribe if you rock with it. I love doing reactions to people like Anthony Rogers and other people that know a lot about scripture and can break these things down because I like to learn. I also like to do live reactions with stuff like this and also have people come on and share their testimony, share what God's doing in life. We plug in the scriptures. We plug in the truth. That's what it's about here. So if you do like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, you might as well hit that noti bell. I might as well hit that noti bell so you can be notified anytime that I drop. Appreciate you guys. Love y'all. Catch y'all next time. I'm out.